Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, so, after my alcoholic beverages presentation, there was a joke, joke going on in our office. So, where's the chakna? So, that's why uh, this presentation on the snacking industry. Uh, hope everyone is tempted by this uh, picture and you stay with me throughout the presentation. Uh, so, snacks is a very wide term. It includes all these categories, biscuits, confectionaries, ice creams, ready-to-eat foods, chips, nachos, namkeens, energy and protein bars, which is a new and upcoming category. And it's a very wide term. So, uh, anything which you consume between two meals is termed as a snack. So these are the uh, major companies which are uh, there globally. Uh, 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 some Indian companies like Britannia, Parley, uh, Bikaji, Haldirams, etc. And some global companies like Nestle, uh, Ferrero, Mars, uh, Campbell's, etc. So we'll look at uh, some of them and their strategies and we'll look at the whole uh, snacking industry, uh, how is it going. So uh, snacking, uh, despite all the health concerns, uh, continues to grow in some or the other form. Uh, though what constitutes a snack, uh, the definition is changing, but uh, snacking as an industry continues to grow. The global snacking industry is about $800 billion. Uh, it's, uh, if you count countries by GDP, it comes 17th or 18th in number. So it's that big. Uh, 86% of the people around the world uh, snack daily uh, as per uh, the Mondelez report and it's growing. So uh, average snacks per day is around 3.3 uh, globally and 88% of the people as per the survey believe that a balanced diet should include some form of indulgent snacks. Uh, as I said, uh, snacking as a term has evolved over the years. So, uh, especially the last three years uh, when uh, COVID happened, the lockdowns happened, people became more, more health conscious and their uh, preference towards brands changed a lot. Uh, it includes more and different types of foods as well as occasions for eating. Uh, Gen Z's, uh, those who are born between 96 and 2010, uh, consume snacks for uh, relieving anxiety as well as boredom. Millennials uh, consume it for nutritional needs and Gen X, which are the 1965 to 1980 born, they uh, have it more for comfort. Uh, more consumers are preferring to have sm uh, more smaller meals throughout the day rather than having two heavy meals. And there is a preference towards a balanced diet, as I said. Some trends which are which we are seeing globally is that uh, increasingly people are replacing one meal with snacks. So uh, people uh, have say either lunch or dinner and then uh, rest of the meals are uh, small snacks throughout the day. Uh, snacks have become mood food uh, where new snacks some especially some companies promote them as uh, uh, promo, uh, they help in uh, you know your sleep your focus throughout the day uh, with ingredients like vitamins not nootropics etc uh, increasingly consumers are demanding global flavors uh, with a local taste so they want global flavors but with, with a local taste Plant-based snacks, uh, either plant-based proteins or plant-based snacks are a continue, uh, they continue to grow at a healthy pace. Uh, newer snack brands which are smaller in size, but they continue to grow uh, through the D2C uh, route. Channel expansion is a key here because uh, increasingly uh, as consumers go DTC route, uh, they either sell it through their websites, through marketplaces, or even through quick commerce apps like Blinkit, uh, etc. Uh, mindful snacking is again a trend which we are seeing where uh, people are saying that uh, let's not stop it completely. Instead, uh, have, a, have a portion control where you control what amount of snacks you have during the day. And it's one of the rare categories where actually private labels are losing market share because Brands are a little more important here where people, people prefer to have branded uh, packaged foods rather than uh, private labels. 
companies are increasingly moving towards uh, consumers preferences so one as i said is permissible indulgence where uh, people are saying dark chocolate is better for your health uh, then you have portion controls second is reduce sugar and gluten free which is better for your health third is using all uh, natural ingredients organic food etc and the last one is the functional nutrition where we are seeing a upcoming category of energy bars nutrition bars etc uh, this is a financial times article where uh, they have divided uh, the uh, population into uh, six buckets uh, based on age the dark blue is the 1.5 to 3 years uh, sky blue is 4 to 10 years uh, then comes 11 to 18 then comes the uh, main age of 19 to 64 and then 65 to 74 and 75 plus so if you look at the consumption of sugar across age groups uh, you start with cereal products uh, between 1 to 10 years then uh, you consume more and more uh, sugar through chocolates confectioneries etc moving on to non alcoholic non alcoholic beverages and as you pass the uh, uh, minus age uh, you move on to alcoholic beverages uh, over a period of time but cereals is something which is constant across age groups whereas sugars and confectionery is uh, more prevalent in the teenage uh, non alcoholic beverages also during the teenage period and then uh, alcoholic between uh, 19 and 64 kind of range Also, fundamental issue here is not only sugar; it's more of intake of calories. So, uh, changes that only reduce sugar actually don't uh, uh, work. So, Ferrero, for example, has said that Nutella's focus uh, in uh, health terms was portion control rather than completely, uh, you know, stopping consuming uh, Nutella. So, if you look at the global snacks industry, uh, these are the four broad buckets, uh, biscuits, chocolates, candies, gums. If you look at the biscuits category, it's about $100 billion, uh, where Mondelez has a 17% kind of a market share. Second is the chocolates category, uh, where uh, it's about similar size, 100 plus billion. Uh, they have a 12% market share and they are a number two player. Then there are two uh, smaller categories of candies and gums, 60 billion and 17 billion. Now let's look at the global biscuit manufacturers and their market share. So Mondelez uh, by far is the market leader here with a 17% market share. The next big player is Campbell's UK based uh, company and it has around 3% market share globally. So it's a very fragmented industry where the market leader is leading by a huge margin and then you have smaller players across the uh, world. Uh, Britannia and Parley are somewhere there uh, at about 2% uh, market share globally. Now coming to chocolates and confectionery. So uh, again, as I said, it's a 110 billion category. Uh, where uh, there are uh, some large players like Mars, Mondelez, uh, Ferrero, uh, Nestle, etc. And then there are some smaller players. Uh, if you look at uh, market shares, Mars is the leader here with about 13.5% uh, and Mondelez is around 12% kind of market share. Ferrero and Nestle are also close by. So here you see a bit of consolidation happening here because some of the brands are being acquired by these uh, leading players. Now coming to the Indian uh, packaged food industry, uh, it's about uh, 424,000 crores or 4 to 4 zero billion uh, to say and it has been growing at a CAGR of about 8% uh, over the last 7-8 years and it is expected to grow at the same pace uh, by FY26 as well as per the industry reports. What are the growth drivers uh, for the packaged foods industry in India? As we all know, uh, changing demographics where younger population uh, consumes more and more snacks, uh, changing lifestyle where we have working women, nuclear families, exposure to uh, global culture where people uh, travel across the world and uh, see what others are eating, 
फास्ट पेस्ड लाइफ स्टाइल रैपिड अर्बनाइजेशन विच इज हैपनिंग अर्बन कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स अबाउट सेवेंटी एट परसेंट ऑफ द स्नैक्स इंडस्ट्री ओवरऑल दिस ऑब्वियसली दिस इज द ऑर्गेनाइज पाई अनऑर्गेनाइज इज अ बिग पाई यर देन यू एज यू सी इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ यू सी इंक्रीजिंग prosperity increasing uh, uh, gdp and uh, per capita and hence uh, more and more consumption of these products obviously there are more healthier options available now uh, compared to what it was 2 uh, 3 years back and also we have seen a lot of improvement in terms of packaging and quality over the years e retailing or quick commerce is again another driver of growth for these companies if we break up the indian packaged food uh, retail uh, market in india the large pie is the dairy pie which is the orange uh, chart in the pie chart uh, it's about 38.8% where you have all the butter mills cheese uh, curds etc then 32% is snacks and sweets uh, about 14.5% is in uh, biscuits Five and a half percent is baked products, but uh, it's uh, growing at a much faster pace. One uh, percent is ready-to-eat meals. Again, this is also growing faster with the nuclear families and working women. If we look at the uh, savory and snacks market, where we will be focusing on at least for the next few slides, it's about seven fifty billion dollars, and it's roughly divided between fifty uh, percent traditional snacks and fifty percent Western snacks. Uh, tra by traditional snacks, I mean uh, namkeens, bujia, uh, ethnic snacks like samosas, kachoris, chaklis, etc. Whereas Western snacks means uh, chips, extruded, extruders, bridges, etc. Overall, this snacks market has been growing at a faster pace compared to the packaged foods industry. So this is growing at about thirteen percent uh, over the last seven eight years. And if we break this up into organized and unorganized, organized is about fifty six percent, unorganized is about forty four percent. Out of the organized market, obviously the Western snacks is a bigger pie, uh, where you have players like PepsiCo. Uh, uh or uh, itc with their bingo brand uh, and others and then you have bujia and namkeens with uh, haldirams bikajis etc unorganized uh, a large chunk of it is chips where you see these private label brands these uh, packs where you don't have any labels or don't see any branded uh, food uh, here then you have extruders and bridges some of the trends here which are specific to india one is a shift from unorganized to organized which is uh, uh, being seen second is actually we are seeing a reverse trend where people are moving from western snacks to traditional snacks where people are shifting from chips etc to namkeens like bujia or kur kurmure etc also the, uh, right Uh, now what we are seeing is the uh, sale of products being happening uh, of items which were not being sold earlier something like uh, bhakar wadi which was sold in loose packages or unbranded uh, things which are now being sold as branded foods uh, or bhel puri by haldiram sam panna by paper boat etc increasingly we are uh, seeing more and more focus on safety and hygiene uh, uh, shift towards healthier options and one thing which is peculiar to india is that you need to have large number of sku's uh, whether you are into traditional snacks or western snacks uh, large number of sku's uh, you should be present in just as an example uh, so this is from uh, bikaji foods uh, drhp they have about 300 sku's uh, 14 in bujia 66 in namkeen 43 in packaged sweets 8 under papads uh 32 under western snacks and other snacks would include frozen food uh, gift packs etc that around 144 sku so they have uh, 300 sku players which are bigger than bikaji something like a haldirams would have uh, closer to 7 to 800 kind of sku uh if we look at the indian sweets market it's about 600 billion dollars but a large part of this is unorganized where you have these local uh, sweets uh, vendors selling sweets out of the organized pie uh, 28% is milk based uh, 17% is dry fruit based uh, 20% is sonpapri and 34% is others 
again this is growing at a pace of 8% which is similar to the packaged foods industry growth now coming to the uh, geography wise breakup of the industry if we look at the uh, breakup of the packaged foods industry uh, uh, if we look at savory snacks market it's dominated by north and west where uh, north is uh, uh, ncr delhi ncr haryana region and rajasthan and gujarat in west region co constitute a large part of the industry followed by uh, east and then south if you look at the sweets market again here north is the leader where with a 35% kind of uh, revenue share and followed by east where uh, kolkata uh, west bengal uh, kind of uh, cities uh, consume a lot of sweets now coming to the market share of the organized players if we look at the ethnic snacks market uh, haldirams uh, again uh, i'll uh, uh, tell the story of Haldi Haldirams in detail going forward, but uh, it's broken up into uh, two or three factions. So Haldirams Delhi and Nagpur is about uh, 38 and a half percent, followed by Balaji with the uh, 10 percent kind of market share. Bikaji is around 9 percent. Bikanerwala with its brand Bikano is about 6 percent. Uh, Pepsi is a relatively small player in the ethnic snacks market with about 3 percent market share. And then you have Haldiram Kolkata where it's about 1.8% uh, kind of market share. If you look at the Western snacks market, it's a little more consolidated with PepsiCo with a 23% market share, followed by ITC Bingo uh, with about 13%. Uh, uh, Balaji is about 10.5%. Haldirams is again here with 8.5% uh, kind of market share, followed by Pratap Snacks and DFM Foods. So uh, this is the brand wise uh, market share which and the evolution over the last four years and this includes only the snacks part. So Haldirams as I said is the market leader here with 11% market share. Balaji uh, was growing very fast from 2015 to 2019 kind of period which has now kind of plateaued over the last three years. ITC has been around 6, 6.5% 6 market share. Uh, Parley uh, with its Parley products, uh, uh, pa Parley brand is about 5% market share. Bikaji is about 3%. Uh, Yellow Diamond brand of Pratap Snacks is around uh, 3%. And Lay's is around 2.7%. Uh, it, it has been losing market share to other uh, players here. And if we include ice creams, confectionaries in this, then Parley, uh, obviously, with uh, because of the biscuits and the other snacks, it's about 11.6%. Britannia is about 10%. Again, this is because biscuits is a large pie of the uh, overall industry. ITC uh, with its Sunfeast brand is about 4.4%. ITC with its Bingo brand is 2.1%. Uh, dairy milk with Mondelez is around 3.5%, etc. Now, if, if we look at the confectionery market, uh, premium chocolate is something which has been gaining traction over the last few years. Consumers are becoming more and more portion conscious here where uh, people are consuming uh, uh, lower pack sizes here. Also, you have uh, newer brands like uh, Ketofi, Zevich, uh, Ditch the Guilt, Mojo Thins, etc., which have entered the market and which uh, claim to be healthy. New players are gaining traction on the e-commerce websites. And if you look at the confectionery market share, despite the competition from the newer players, Mondelez is something which has been growing market share here. It's up at about 57% market share compared to 54% uh, of four or five years back. Nestle is the second player with uh, Kit Kat, Munch, etc. with about 16%. Ferrero is about 8%. Uh, Mars is about 2.5%. Amol with its uh, uh, Cadbury brand has been able to grow the market share here, but it's constant at about 1%. If you look at ice creams, ice creams as a category took a hard hit during COVID because people were not moving out, uh, people were preferring warm food, they were not preferring cold food, etc. Uh, market leader Amul uh, has said that it will double the capacity over the next couple of years. So that will add a lot to the industry size. 
demand for healthier ice cream variants are on the rise where we see uh, uh, people having whey protein in their ice creams. Uh, products which have claims or pos positioning such as natural, free from artificial additives, etc. are gain gaining popula popularity. Uh, unit prices of these healthier options are obviously almost double of the normal ice creams that you sell and that's prevalent across the industry, be it ice creams or be it any other snacks. If we look at the ice creams market share, Amul is the market leader here with about 16%. Uh, HUL uh, with its brands like uh, Quality Walls, Magnum, uh, Cornetto, etc. is uh, second with 11%. Deviani Foods with a cream bale brand is about 6%. Hatsun Agro with its Arun brand is about 5.8%. And then you have upcoming players like Have More with a 4.3% market share. If we uh, look at biscuits as a category, again, I'll not go into detail here because biscuits is uh, very well covered and very well discussed. Uh, there's consistent premiumization which has been happening within the category. People are moving from plain, plain biscuits to creams, filled biscuits, cookies, wafer biscuits, etc. Uh, most of these biscuit companies have entered into adjacent categories. Uh, we have seen Parley do that and now Britannia is also trying to enter into other adjacent categories. Uh, Parley is very strong in the entry category. ITC is focused on the premium category and Britannia is somewhere in between. Now, if you look at the biscuits market share, uh, Britannia is the market leader here. Uh, they became the market leader sometime uh, two years back, uh, where Parley was a market leader, uh, followed by ITC with about 12%, and they have been gaining market share here from 10 to 12%. Mondelez, with its Oreo brand, has been uh, gaining market share, but it's still very, very small. So if we look at the retail value of the processed food which is consumed in the country, uh, it's about 38, it's grown about 38x in the last 14 years. That's how we have grown in terms of consumption of these un ultra processed uh, products. And that is why we have an array of uh, sugar free or diet control or healthy brands coming up. So if you look at most of these brands, they promote themselves as healthier options to the options which are existing in the market. Be it the, the green snack company or uh, snackable max protein, whole, uh, the whole truth or max uh, yoga bar which was recently acquired by ITC. Uh, Tata Soulful is a brand uh, from Tata Consumer Products. So all these brands promote themselves as healthier options and hence uh, they are trying to enter into the uh, snacks market. Uh, let's look at some of the companies present in this market. Most of them are uh, private uh, and unlisted. Some of them are listed but still very very small. So we we'll look at the first uh, uh, company which is Haldirams. Uh, this is the family chart of Haldiram family. It's a bit confusing so I thought I'll just put up the chart here. So Ganga Bishan Agarwal, who is uh, uh, well known as Haldiram Agarwal, he was the uh, uh, father of this family and he had three sons. Mulchand Agarwal was based in Bikaner and then he had four sons. Rameshwar Lal Agarwal was handed the West Bengal uh, business, which is now Haldiram's Kolkata. And then Mulchan Agarwal had four sons. Uh, Shiv Kishan Agarwal was handed the Nagpur region. Shiv Ratan Agarwal was uh, given the Bikaner region. And then the younger sons were given Delhi region. Nagpur uh, business is about uh, 1000 crores. Whereas uh, Delhi business is the bigger business. And Bikaner uh, business, which was handed over to Shivratan Agarwal, separated from the Haldi Rams brand and started his own brand, which is now called Bikaji Foods. And it's a listed company. Sorry. So uh, if you want to know more about the family and the how they uh, came up with this uh, brand Haldi Rams, how they built this empire, uh, this is a nice book, Bujia Barons. And how uh, it describes how they converted uh, the product with a one week shelf life to uh, six months, how packaging was a game changer for them, 
how they entered newer categories and kolkata at that time was the biggest business and hence uh, the uh, brother who was given the kolkata business was very happy at that time but that has kind of plateaued whereas delhi and nagpur businesses have grown uh, tremendously uh, they are in talks to come up with an ipo in the coming years but uh, what they want to do is they want to merge the delhi and the nagpur businesses first and then they will probably come out with a listing Coming to Balaji Wafers, again, uh, started from Rajkot, uh, Chandubai Virani is a, a very well-known uh, promoter and a businessman where he started off from a smaller town and they are very, very strong in their uh, uh, western region where Maharashtra, Gujarat, Rajasthan, MP kind of built. They are now entering into newer categories, started off from only potato chips, now entering into newer categories like instant noodles, wafer biscuits, protein bars, etc. And trying to become a national player from just a uh, Western India kind of focused player. Uh, they had got an offer from PepsiCo to acquire them when they started off and they did, did well with their uh, potato chips sometime in 2013-2014. But they rejected that offer from PepsiCo at that time. Uh, they have rejected offers from many private equity players over the years. Uh, there have been many talks of private equity players uh, trying to take a stake here, but they have rejected them. And they were going to come out with an IPO in 2019, which was again shelved. So there is a uh, national geography documentary, uh, which is Super Factories on Balaji Wafers, where uh, they came up with a new factory during COVID uh, peak number of cases were there at that point in time and they had to commission the plant to, to be able to service the country. So they remotely commissioned the plant and how they did that, uh, it's a wonderful documentary uh, to go through. Now coming to Bikaji Foods, it's uh, about 15 to 1600 crore in revenues. Uh, it's the largest manufacturer of Bujia Save, uh, second largest manufacturer of Papad after the Lijat and third largest player in the organized sweets market. Their key markets are Rajasthan, Assam and Bihar. So if you look at most of these companies, they are in that range of 1000 to 2000 crores. Beyond 2000 crores, uh, it has been very, very difficult for most of these brands to grow, except for Balaji, which has grown uh, in the 2015 to 2019 period and then plateaued out, but still at 3000 crores uh, revenues. Again, another company, Gopal Namkin, based out of Rajkot, similar size, 13 to 1400 crores in revenues. Uh, it's a leading brand in Gujarat. Recently, there was a news article where uh, one of the brothers bought stake of another br uh, brother at a valuation of about 1700 crores. And they are also preparing for IPO in the next financial year. Another company which is again uh, of a similar size which is Pratap Snacks. Uh, it's more uh, strong in the extruded snacks and potato chips market and less uh, uh, strong in the namkeen market where they want to grow in the future and they want to become a, a national player. They started from a single product which was uh, chips and then now uh, they have moved into multiple products started with one city mumbai now they are in 125 cities and they want to move from impulse buying to more of planned consumption of uh, snacks uh, and those categories like namkeens etc coming to parley products again parley as an uh, unlisted company has done really really well uh, they have revenues of about 16000 crores uh, predominantly uh, biscuits revenues uh, followed by other snacks. Uh, popular brands like Parleji, Monaco, Melody, Crackjack, 2020, etc. It's the largest packaged foods company by revenues. Uh, Nestle is very, very close to this, but again, Nestle is into more of infant nutrition, etc. Uh, 55 to 60 percent of the Parley's revenues uh, still comes from the rural areas where they are more strong in terms of entry level biscuits. They are now entering into adjacent categories like rusks, cakes, cereals, etc. We saw this uh, news article uh, about two three days back where ITC acquired a yoga bar to uh, have presence in the protein bar category. 
and what most of the news articles claim is that the protein bar category size is about 45000 crores so it's not a small category but there is no strong player here there are many players with a smaller market share itc also has some other brands like sunfeast bingo yippy noodles febel be natural in juices etc which again comes in this packaged food kind of category moving on to a, a couple of uh, international companies uh, mondelez international so what what it is doing is that they are majorly focused on two categories one is the chocolates and other is the biscuits over a period of time what they have done is they have uh, Diverse, di uh, divested uh, the other businesses like gums, candies, uh, some coffee assets that they hold, uh, that they held over a period of time. And chocolates and biscuits as a category has grown from about 60% of their revenues to about 80% and they want to go to 90% of their revenues, which is their long term vision. Again, uh, about 35% uh, of their revenues come from emerging markets, which have been growing at a much faster pace compared to the developed markets. Another thing which they have been talking about is that uh, lines are blurring between chocolates and biscuits. What you call uh, a biscuit is now being called a chocolate biscuit. Uh, somewhere in between there is a category which is developing where you have baked snacks, you have uh, cream biscuits, you have Oreos etc. Kellogg's is another company which is now focusing on the snacks category. So it was always a market leader in terms of cereals, but they also want to grow in terms of other snacks. So now what they are doing is they are divesting their companies. They are demerging their companies into three companies. One is a global snacking company, uh, which will become an international breakfast uh, company. Second is a US, Canada and Caribbean uh, only breakfast cereal company. Third is a plant based foods company where they will probably raise some capital from outside and try to grow this uh, brand. They want to focus more on individual uh, categories rather than having everything in one company and not having attention to any of them. So what are the risks uh, uh, for this industry? One risk which has been in the news for the last couple of years is product labeling where uh, you have front of the pack warning labels just like you have it on the cigarettes where you have a star rating of all the uh, packaged foods so that has been in the news for a couple of years but this regulation has not yet come through second is you have competition from a lot of smaller and unorganized players uh, earlier you had more un unorganized players now you have uh, smaller d2c brands which have been uh, competing very intensely here and last is the change in the habits of the consumer where uh, consumers say I don't want to have snacks I'll probably have healthier options which are available in the market rather than having snacks so these are the key risks which are there for these companies yeah that's it questions Yeah. Hi Raj. Hi. Great presentation. Thank you. Just wanted to add a quick comment on the risks. So there is one more risk for food companies in general is the risk of some contamination, so which has happened in like in the case of Maggie and also temporarily they get into trouble all over the world. Right. So. Yeah, that's definitely a risk. Yeah. Yeah, hi Raj. Hi, hi. Uh, so just a trend that I can see from my presentation, the Western companies are uh, divesting and focusing on categories, whereas the Indian companies are trying to get into multiple categories. So how do you want to see this as a trend for, say, Indian companies, whether it's good to be diversifying it or good to be focusing on it? So uh, snacks as a definition in India is completely different from what it is there in the Western countries. So some of the namkeens which we consume here, they are not consumed there. Whereas uh, if you look at the uh, Western snacks market specifically, which uh, has chips, extruders, etc. 
more or less uh, global companies and indian companies are more or less similar and coming to your comment about uh, co uh, western companies focusing on specific categories indian companies are too small right now and there are large number of players which are there in each of the categories so if you want to grow over a period of time you have to enter into newer categories because uh, unorganized players are also growing it's not that they are not growing it's just that the organized players are growing at a faster pace and they are taking some of the market share but the industry size is growing at a much faster pace yeah just just want to kind of emphasize if you are evaluating an indian company so would you say that it's good to be having a diversification as a strategy or it's not a focused approach for a category should be a better way just a just yeah. a sense so it depends on the management bandwidth also again here there are not uh, too many larger players so if you look at companies like say britannia which was there into biscuits for so many years then they entered into cakes rusks etc now into croissants etc so once you build a company where you have a sizable kind of revenue base then you try and enter into new adjacent categories not into completely new categories so biscuits player entering into say a completely new category would be harmful to the company whereas it entering into a adjacent category where the distribution channel is more or less similar and you can sell the uh, more and more products to the same channel then it's good so depends on company to company depends on the management bandwidth Hi. Yeah. So, going forward, do you really see unorganized sector uh, uh, people from organized unorganized sector buying more and more from brands? Because so many snacks, you know, which is given by unorganized sector, are uh, price sensitive categories. So there, you know, if you buy a packet food, so people say that hawa mare chani under. You know, so you know how do you see organized sector growing in that particular segment? So definitely, there will be some market share which will be shifting from unorganized to organized. But it's not that unorganized will completely stop; it will or it will start degrowing. You will have these local uh, shops which will sell uh, small wafer packets, small biscuits. Uh, biscuits again uh, is only branded, but small wafer packets or small bhakar vadis or etc., which are unbranded. but they sell them or you have these uh, local sweet shops which uh, sell a lot of farsan so you you will continue to have these shops it's just that they are growing at a lower pace than the organized players and hence they are losing market share that's the only thing okay now this itc to everybody is coming in to that branded category so are they actually uh, making money or they are testing the market uh, with which brand are you talking about? say itc all kinds of packet food they have introduced hmm. i'm not talking about atta and all that hmm. talking about wafers or that uh, so they don't disclose about individual categories but fmcg as a whole they are definitely making money again fmcg as a whole includes atta and uh, these products also but they don't give a break up of how much money they are making on atta or how much they are making but definitely they are making profits in both the categories yeah one last question sorry yeah uh i have a neighbor who is into wafer category i think cheda hmm. so he also said i don't want any outside money is hmm. it because this balaji or this cheda and all that have huge margin and they don't want to uh they don't visualize that they will be able to keep the margin intact and grow also so it's not about uh, they have huge margin if you look at the listed companies the margins are somewhere between 10 and 15 percent so it's not that they have huge margins secondly uh, why these companies uh, don't take money from private equity players or uh, some larger players like pepsico is that 
they feel that they have a advantage in terms of understanding indian markets and they can do well alone rather than taking someone on board and then uh, all the people on the board have different uh, having different strategies so it's better to have uh, knowledge about the local markets and then try and grow it so okay, they have a better knowledge yeah and they can stick to the category they yes out, yes then they will have to compulsorily introduce something which they may not want to introduce correct Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Raj. Yeah. Uh, very detailed presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, while you would have studied the category and the industry, what are the trends are you seeing? You know, there are snacks which are low end SKUs, five bucks. You know, Parleyji and others, and then there are snacks which can be fifty, hundred, two hundred bucks. Yeah. So, where is the growth? Is the five buck segment growing, or the premium, the high end chocolates and this? that is growing faster and if i if, if at all there is any trend then what are the companies doing to capture that trend so uh, all these segments are growing in fact uh, if you uh, bucket it into rural and urban rural again 5 and 10 rupee packets are still growing and continue to grow even in urban if it's impulse buying then you would probably buy a 5 rupee or a 10 rupee packet from wherever you can get and consume it and if it's a more kind of a planned buying where you are buying it for your house consumption in house consumption then you will probably buy a family pack or a bigger pack that is more kind of planned buying of bujia se or whatever uh, namkins that you are consuming during the day so it's not that one segment is degrowing and the other segment is uh, growing faster uh, all of them are growing some may be at a lower pace some may be at a higher pace but as a trend i think uh, all of them are growing at about 7 to 12% kind of rate so clear cut premiumization trend you are seeing here uh premiumization is happening especially in the urban crowd in the rural crowd it's still the same uh, kind of consumption and just last one here uh, so amongst the new additions in the sku so which uh, where are you seeing you know maximum traction you know what uh, category and where they are seeing growth so in the last 2 or 3 years family packs as a contributor to the whole category has been increasing at a uh, alarming pace mainly because covid lockdowns people were at home and ordering larger pack sizes but again it's a trend which we'll have to see going forward whether it continues or not at least it has continued last year as well uh, where we did not have lockdowns at least in the second half Uh, so we'll have to see whether that continues as a trend or not. But five uh, and ten rupee packets continue to grow uh, in terms of impulse buying. Uh, whenever you want to have a quick snack, you will have that. Thanks. Yeah. So many of these snacks need to be packed in airtight, weatherproof, moisture-proof packaging, in multi-layer packaging, etc. so uh you know the kind of packaging they have been using multi layered packaging etc you know it's a big concern it, they are they cause lot of pollution because they are bi- non biodegradable so have you seen something new developing which is which has those qualities and they are still biodegradable or otherwise it's a big environmental hazard so if you look at the packaging it has more or less remained same over the last 7 8 years at least so nothing has changed as such probably people have moved from those uh, packets to about uh, zipper packs but again that's the only change i have seen in the packaging apart from that in terms of packaging material i haven't seen much uh, happening in terms of changes because in india smaller, hello yeah smaller sk you sell more so you know it's more littering all over india wherever you go you have littering of these plastic definitely so packets. if you go to a railway station you will have those 5 rupee packs which are yeah. selling really well so. yeah big problem yeah so more it in grows the more we will have a environmental problem that's why family packs growing in terms of industry size i think that that's a better alternative to have uh, to consume probably yeah. Yeah, Raj. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, how flexible is the production line here? As in, if you want to keep changing the SKUs, how easy is it? 
it's not that difficult so uh, one documentary which i alluded to it's a very good documentary on the production lines and how they change from say uh, potato chips to extruders to bridges how they change that it's uh, it's visible in that documentary it's not that difficult some changes need to be done but it's not that difficult thank you yeah hi raj um, just wanted to understand that you know this category is growing at 8 to 10% so are the companies like putting their own manufacturing facilities or they are going via contract manufacturing where they just give the formulations and you know becomes less capital intensive so what is the trend like are they adding more capacity or it is contract manufacturing so most of these companies at this point in time have their own manufacturing companies as and when they grow from being a regional player to a national player uh, probably they will move some of the production to contract manufacturing or uh, have their own plants uh, across the country but as of now since they are more regional based and they have started from a lower base they still have their own manufacturing facilities so balaji wafers has a factory only in rajkot uh, gopal namkeen has a factory only in rajkot whereas haldirams has uh, uh, three or four locations so uh, bikaji has uh, three or four locations right now so yeah right now it's own manufacturing probably in the future as and when they grow into different regions they will probably have uh, contract yeah no one great thanks whenever things got rough i always remember what my father used to say running a business does test a man my son there are ups and downs glorious highs and sometimes a low that leaves you feeling defeated the character of a man and the character of a business are not very different are they yes but when the chips are down we must stand up dust ourselves off and more wrong volatility it's a funny thing it makes you question yourself and wonder if you've made all the right decisions sure you can question some of your decisions but stay steadfast on your goals dad always said there are no shortcuts and no quick profits there are no free lunches are there there is only one right way at ppfs we think like rahul and his father that volatility is a fact of running a business and buying equity shares is like owning a part of that business we use value investing principles to manage your money this means we invest in the right businesses at reasonable prices and for a longer term ppfas mutual fund there's only one right way mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully